in this part we will be learning about the other stuff in this chapter first is the molecular mass now you have also learned about the molecular mass in 8th standard the molecular mass of a substance is the sum of atomic masses of all the atoms in single molecule of that substance also the molecular mass is expressed in the unit that is dalton and the symbol is u so for example if you have to calculate the molecular mass of water now you will see the formula of water water is h2o that means there are two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom now according to molecular mass it is the sum of atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule of that substance so that means how what what atoms are there in water we have hydrogen and we have oxygen we have two hydrogen and we have one oxygen so when you have to calculate the molecular mass of water so we will calculate 2 into atomic mass of hydrogen why 2 we have taken because we have two hydrogen atoms here so 2 into atomic mass of hydrogen plus how many oxygen atom we have we have one oxygen atom so 1 into atomic mass of oxygen atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 so 2 into 1 then we have the atomic mass of oxygen which is 16 so 1 into 16 which is 16 so 16 plus 2 is 18 u that is 18 daltons so this is how you calculate the molecular mass now take out your rough book and try to calculate the molecular mass of different things like hcl h2so4 nacl and so on next is the mole concept now if i tell you to weigh a single grain of tur dal masoor dal or chana dal will you be able to weigh a single grain of these dal no but the same if i tell you to weigh 10 grams of tur dal masoor dal or chana dal then it becomes easy for you and convenient for you to weigh it so in the same manner while we are carrying out a chemical reaction it is convenient to measure out quantities that can be handled instead of counting the number of atoms and molecules so instead of counting each number of atom that there are so many number of atom and so many number of molecules which are present in particular compound so what we do is we find out the mole so that is why we use this concept that is mole the concept of mole is used in these type of purposes so a mole is that quantity of substance whose mass in gram is equal to the magnitude of molecular mass of the substance in daltons so mass in gram is equal to the molecular mass of substance in dalton so for example if we will take for oxygen so if you will see the molecular mass of oxygen is 32 so that means you can say that as the molecular mass of oxygen is 32 dalton so therefore 32 grams of oxygen is present in 1 mole of oxygen same you can say that similarly for molecular mass of water is 18 dalton so therefore 18 grams of water makes 1 mole of water so if we have to find out through formula so number of moles of substance that is small n is equal to mass of the substance in gram upon molecular mass of the substance so you will get the number of moles of that particular substance so this is a concept that we use to find out the quantities so that it becomes convenient for us to know that how many number of what is actual number of atoms and molecules which are present in it instead of counting each one of them we directly use the concept of mole next is the avogadro's number now the number of molecules in one mole of a substance is constant now this avogadro number was discovered by a scientist that is an italian scientist avogadro 
and therefore the name avogadro was given to this number the symbol is capital n small a and the number is 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 so now as in one dozen there are 12 atoms so same way if i say a mole of water it has 18 grams of water contains 0.22 into 10 raised to 23 molecules of water so whatever will be your answer if you find out the number of moles if you got 1.5 moles so what you will do is at the end you will multiply 1.5 into 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 so that will be your total answer that means so many molecules are present in that particular uh, substance so this is what is called as avogadro's number so once you get the mole of a particular substance then you can find out ki in that mole how many molecules are present so for that you will multiply the mole into the avogadro's number now next is the valency now you have studied about valency in your 8th standard also the capacity of an element to combine is called its valency and it is indicated by a specific number for all the elements we have a specific valency which is there for example the valency of lithium will be different the valency of boron will be different and so on it indicates the number of chemical bonds formed by one atom of that element with other atom so it is basically finding out that what is the chemical bond that is formed the bonds are formed by giving or taking or sharing of electrons we all know that whenever we have learned about the different composition for example the atomic number is 3 so in the first shell two electrons will be there and in the next shell one electron will be there as one is the valence electron it is that one electron will be shared with someone else that same happens with water for hydrogen one electron is only one electron it has the incomplete orbit so it combines with oxygen that is two hydrogen atoms two electrons which are there they combine with the oxygen atom and together they form eight and they become complete so in basically it is nothing but the sharing or giving or taking of electrons number of electrons that are given away or taken up is always a whole number and so the valency is also always a whole number so this you have to remember that the valency will always be a whole number valency can never be 1.2 2.3 4.4 .4 and all valency will always be a whole number it can be 1 2 3 4 some elements under different conditions give away or take up different number of electrons thus more than one valency or they have variable valency now this is a different thing like in some electrons it might happen not all the electrons in some electrons for example if you will see for carbon the carbon we have carbon 12 also we have carbon 14 also we have carbon 16 also and so on there are different forms of carbons which are present so when these carbon they will take the electron the valency will differ because of the different number of the electrons which are present in them as the they are variable so these are called as variable valency so for same element also for one that is for carbon the valency will differ so this is all about valency which is nothing but the capacity of elements to combine with the other substance now next is the chemical formula now the chemical formula it is the characteristics of compounds which is formed by the ionic bonds now we all know that compounds are formed by ionic bonds and they have two ions it can be positive or negative ion if it is positive it is called as cation and if it is a negative ion it is called as anion so according to that if it is positive ion we call it as a basic radical and if it is a negative ion we call it as an acidic radical now you may say why they are called as radical now they are called as positive and negative radical or basic or acidic radical because they take part in the 
chemical reaction and they take part independently in the chemical reaction and therefore it is called as an radical so the cationic part are called as basic radical and the anions are called as acidic radical now the force of attraction between these are oppositely charged radical they are the ionic bond so whatever force is there between the radicals they are the ionic bonds and the chemical formula of these are written by using symbols of the different elements basic radicals are always written first or on the right so this you have to remember that whenever you are writing basic radical it is always written first and on the right side the number before indicate the number of molecules while the ones after are the part of chemical formula now you might get confused for example if it is written 3 co2 so the first number that is this number that is the number the, the this number which is present which is written before this is called the number of molecules so that means there are 3 co2 molecules which are there this indicates that three molecules of carbon dioxide are there which take part which and these are made up of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen there are three carbon dioxide and one carbon is there and two oxygen is there so this you have to remember that this is the number of molecules of the particular compound which is present here now you may think what are basic radicals and what are acidic radicals we saw that they have cations and anions so the radicals which are formed by removal of electrons from the atom of metals are called as basic radicals so for example sodium na plus potassium k plus silver ag plus then magnesium mg2 plus these are all basic radical also they have a positive charge then next is acidic radical now the radicals which are formed by adding the electrons to the atom of non metal so from this you can identify that if it is the electrons which are removed from the atom of the metal they are basic radicals and if they are uh, the electrons which are added to the atoms of non metals they are acidic radicals and also they have a negative sign like h minus cl minus s2 minus mno4 minus and so on here in here you will find that so many examples are given and if you will see the basic radicals all are having the positive charge well as acidic radicals they all are having the negative charge